Hi guys, welcome back to the Kratos Nutrition YouTube channel. So it's official, we know the workouts that the guys and girls of the CrossFit Games will be facing this weekend. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the programming, how that might change our predictions on who we think is going to come out on top. I'm also going to give an insight into what I think will be good scores for these events. If you don't know about the format so far, then each of the athletes are going to be competing in their home gym and they're going to be given four time slots of three hours each to complete the workouts. This is going to be spread out between a Friday morning, a Friday evening, a Saturday morning and a Saturday afternoon shift. So let's get started. Friday morning, event number one, Friendly Fran. As you can see here, Friendly Fran is three rounds of 21 thrusters at 52 kilos for the guys, 38 kilos for the ladies and 21 chest to bar pull up. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is a regular Fran. It is not going to be a sprint, although it will be a short workout. It's not going to be something you're going to see the majority of these guys doing unbroken. I'd personally be surprised to see more than five or 10 people going unbroken through this event. If you think a regular Fran at 42 and a half kilos and 29 kilos for the guys and the girls respectively and normal pull ups, uh, is 45 reps of each movement. This is 63 reps of each movement with the added complexity of it being chest to bars and a heavier load. Regular sort of fran times for these athletes would be in and around two minutes. A couple of them would be going sub two minutes as well. I reckon that times for this event, you're going to be looking at the top times for the guys to potentially even be going sub four, but certainly around that four minute mark. And for the girls, probably around about the four and a half minute mark. In terms of who I think is going to come out on top in this event, for the guys, it's going to be a pretty close call in my book between Matt Fraser and Noah Olsen. Um, this is based purely on how Mary went at the games last year, the high volume of pull-ups. Um, I'm going to give this one to Fraser just because I think his cycle speed on the thrusters is probably going to be a little bit faster. For the ladies, my three top picks are Samantha Briggs, Carrie Pierce, and Jamie Simmons with me edging towards Samantha Briggs for this one, simply because she always does well on these Fran style workouts when they come up in the open. The second workout of the first time slot is a one rep max front squat. Now they've been given a 20 minute time cap for this workout, so there aren't gonna be time restraint issues. People are gonna have, have plenty of time to build up to heavy loads, so expect to see some big weights lifted. I'd imagine that the top guys are gonna be in and around that 200 kilo mark, potentially with a couple going above that and the ladies are going to be in around the 130 to 140 kilo mark and again don't be surprised to see somebody breaking that 140 kilo weight barrier. Despite the obvious picks of Matt Fraser and Patrick Valner to do well in this on the guys side of the event there are three other names that I'd like to look out for. First is an athlete that I spent time coaching Tyler Christopher. Second is Chandler Smith. Third is Griffin Royal. We saw Griffin lifting some unbelievable loads uh, at the Norwegian CrossFit Championships. We also saw Chandler Smith winning the Clean and Jerk event um, despite his form in the uh, Rogue Invitational. But I'm really interested to see what Tyler can lift in this event, having seen him front squat close to 200 kilos last year. On the ladies' side of the heat, I'm imagining it's going to be a quite a close call between Tia Toomey, who's dominated strength events at the games level for the last few years, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, who always loves a heavy barbell, and Danny Spiegel. And I'm edging towards Danny Spiegel for this simply because of the size of her legs. <laughs> On to Friday evening, and we have another two workouts in this time slot. The first is Dam Diane. We're looking at three rounds of 15 deadlifts and 15 strict deficit handstand push-ups. We're looking at around 140 kilos for the guys and around 90 kilos for the ladies uh, in terms of weight on the barbell. And for the guys, we're looking at a three and a half inch deficit and a two inch deficit for the ladies. In terms of time frame, I can imagine that the best times are gonna be in around that four minute mark for the guys and around that four and a half minute mark for the ladies. It's the same volume as a regular Diane, which would be a 21.15.9, so 45 reps of each, but obviously that heavier load and that higher skill and strength element with the handstand push-ups is gonna take a little bit longer. In terms of my picks for this event, for the guys, Matt Fraser is gonna be up there again, and I'd imagine he will win this. The only person I can see really pushing him would be Jeffrey Adler. For the ladies, uh, the three names that I sort of looked at initially when I saw this workout were Carrie Pierce, uh, Caroline Reason Thibault and Brooke Wells. 
Brooke Wells is a little bit of a curveball because we all know the controversy around her uh, deadlift and handstand push-up workout a few opens ago. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how she deals with this event. Um, and I'm edging towards Carrie Pierce winning this simply again because of how she competed last year in Mary with the handstand push-ups. The second event of the second block is a 1,000 meter row. This is going to hurt. There is no holding back, it's empty the tank, no pacing strategy, just go as hard as you can and hang on. For the guys, I'd imagine the best score is going to be in and around that uh, 255 mark. Um, if anybody goes faster than that, then that is a hell of a shift. For the ladies, I'd say around a 310 to 315 mark is going to be a really, really good score. This one's going to be a little bit interesting to see how um, how it shakes up on the leaderboard because it's a purely power output event and we don't see that sort of thing at the CrossFit Games very often. It's also going to suit the bigger frames uh, and if you can put that power down and you've got good technique, an extra couple of kilos and an extra couple of inches in terms of height is going to go a long way. So that being said, my three picks for the guys are Brent Fakowski, Cole Sager and David Schronke. Knowing that David has got a rowing background and he's also one of the heavier men in the field, I'm going to edge towards him winning this one with Fakowski pushing him pretty hard. On the girls' side of the field, we're looking again at Sam Briggs, who is a world record holder over this distance for her age group and weight category. Uh, Laura Horvath, who is renowned for her erg ability, and Gabby Megalia. For me, this one's probably going to go to Horvath simply because the amount of power she's going to be able to put down in a shorter space of time. If it was a longer row, potentially Briggs would take it. On to day two. Saturday morning, again, the first shift will have two workouts. That first workout is Nasty Nancy. The first thing I thought when I saw this was, this is going to be long. It's going to hurt and it's heavy. It's almost exactly double the weight of what the regular Nancy would be. So the guys are shifting around 85 kilos and the ladies shifting just over 55 kilos. Five rounds of a 500 meter run, 15 overhead squats and 15 bar facing burpees thrown in just for good measure. I'd imagine that the best times for the guys is going to be around that 22 to 23 minute mark, maybe a little bit faster, and for the ladies probably around about the 25 minute mark. Four names that jump out with me on the men's side of the field for this one, again, it's, uh, it's no shock that I'm going to keep saying this name, but Matt Fraser. If you look at last year's CrossFit Games, the closest workout to this event was the first cut, and he dominated that event. Uh, other guys that did well in the first cut that are competing this weekend are Chandler Smith and Bjorkvin Carl Goodmanson. The other one who uh, is a little bit left of field, hasn't competed in the Games before, but should do well at this event, is Roman Krenikov. Out of those four, I'm actually going to say I think that Bjorkvin's going to take this one. On the ladies' side of the field, We've got three names in Tia Claire Toomey, Kristen Halter, and Emma McQuaid. Again, no surprise that I'm going to go for Tia Toomey to win this event, but I also think that uh, this will probably be Emma McQuaid's best event for the weekend. Uh, she's notoriously done well in longer events that have got some form of overhead squat or snatch in. Event six and the second event on day two of the games is 20 minutes to establish a max effort handstand hold. I think it's great that it's put in there but it's going to definitely mix things up in terms of the leaderboard. You're really going to see some some big shifts in scores here and I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the favourites dropping out having a poor performance here and some unknowns uh, performing really really well. If that's the case could we see one or two people that were expecting to finish in the top five dropping out because of this event. All you need to do is think about Sam Briggs with a handstand walk or Catherine's Davis daughter with legless rope climbs in regionals gone past to see that one really bad event can cost you that top five spot. That being said, it is a pretty difficult one to call here. Um, the obvious choice for me on the guy's side is Patrick Vellner because of his uh, gymnastics background that I can see figuring here that I, I know about is Jeffrey Adler. But as I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody that I didn't expect to do well dominating this event. On the lady side, the three names that came to mind were Katrin David's daughter, Jamie Simmons, and Carrie Pierce, with my pick being Katrin David's daughter to win this event. In terms of time frames, 
your guess is as good as mine. I, I think anything over two minutes is going to be a really solid effort. And if we see somebody breaking that three to three and a half minute mark, that's going to be phenomenal. And last but not least, they have just announced the final event of the first stage of the CrossFit Games, which is Awful Annie. As most of us had guessed, it was going to be Annie, a variation of uh, one of the CrossFit Benchmark Girls, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. We all guessed that it was going to be with a GHD machine. Dave Castro on the live announcement just now announced they're also going to be doing this with the RX Drag Rope, which is effectively like the first skipping rope that most of us have ever used when we were kids. It makes things a little bit tougher and a little bit slower. He also added another spanner in the works there. At the end of each round, there's going to be five, four, three, two, one cleans at 125 kilos for the guys and 84 kilos for the ladies. Ah! A couple of things come to mind with this event. Uh, one is that it's another relatively short event. I think you're probably going to see guys going in and around eight and a half to nine minutes on this certainly sub 10. In terms of my picks for this event on the guys side I would say obviously Matt Fraser just why not I'm just going to name him for all of them and um, I also think Brent Fikowski is going to do well at this one uh, the fact that you can power clean this his height's going to play a, a big part on the, the GHD he's not going to have to reach back as far um, so I think he's going to do pretty well at this event too and I also remember Noah Olsen doing quite well on Midline March which is a long time ago but he obviously likes a GHD sit up so it'll be interesting to see how he handles this one on the ladies side you guessed it, I'm going for Tia Claire Toomey on this one. My two other options here are Sarah Sigmund's daughter and Catherine David's daughter. Sarah, it's not going to be a heavy barbell for her. I can imagine her power cleaning and potentially going touch and go through those reps. For Catherine, I think it's going to be a little bit more grunt work and she always tends to do well in those sort of events. So overall, when we look at the programming for the events uh, across the weekend, it's very short. Um, there's only one event really that's going to be taking longer than 10 minutes. Nice variation in terms of movements. So I'd like to see some, some muscle ups or toes to bar in there. Um, to bring some more gymnastics in that way. But the general consensus for me is that it's a very power output, short, sharp bouts of effort. And you're going to see a lot of people um, that would have excelled in the, the longer duration pieces like Kristen Halter and Sam Briggs possibly struggling to keep up with the high power output larger athletes. So where do we see any changes uh, from our original predictions on who is going to make that top five. Originally we said Matt Fraser would come first out of the guys and I still think that that will stand true. Second place I picked Bjorkvin Carl Goodmanson. I think we'll probably see Patrick Valner um, stepping up into second place now. I can still see Bjorkvin and Noah Olsen holding third and fourth and I actually think that given the, the workouts the way they are that Chandler Smith is going to take that fifth spot. On the ladies side of things I do see a little bit of a mix up here. I certainly think that Tia is still going to finish on top and Sarah in second but I think that uh, a couple of people are going to shift their way into that top five with Carrie Pierce being one of them Danny Spiegel potentially being another, and it being a mix between Brooke Wells and Cara Saunders uh, for that top five spot. On a final note, I'd like to say it was really good to see the CrossFit Games media team back together and putting together something for us as fans. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Fingers crossed. Those have been my predictions for the CrossFit Games and my analysis of the workouts. Let us know what you think. Agree or disagree? Who do you think is going to make that top five now? What do you think of the workouts? Leave us a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you already subscribed to the channel, thanks very much. Don't be afraid to click the bell notification button so you'll get informed every time we release a new video. I for one can't wait to watch the update shows and see how everyone gets on with the events. I'm looking forward to getting something exciting back on our screens. Enjoy the weekend guys and we'll be back after it's all done with some analysis and thoughts.